Unit six, objective one. This is even. This is um, doing operations with radicals. So before we start, I want to talk about something called even index. That means if you've got a radical and the index here is even, that's square root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, etc. And then we have an even power inside, and this only applies to variables. So x to an even power. Then when we take it out, it's going to be, and it's odd, x odd, I have to use my absolute values. Okay? Even index, even inside, odd out. Without further ado, let's take a look at these. We have two. Square root of 500, square root of A to the fifth, square root of B 20th, square root of C 7th. I've taken and broken it apart. Notice that 500 becomes square root of 100, square root of 5. Square root of A to the fifth, A to the fourth, and A. B to the 20th is just B to the 20th. C to the 6th, or 7th is C to the 6th, C to the 7th. Now, notice, I don't care about numbers. I do have, there we go. Actually, that's not exactly where it's supposed to be. I'm not just sure why it's following me around. Here and here. Okay, the 500 doesn't matter. The A to the 5th, mm, that doesn't matter. That's odd on the inside, not even. B to the 20th, uh, this guy I have to watch out for. And see the 7th, I don't care about. Now, taking square roots, Square root of 100 is 10. Square root of 5 stays under the radical. Square root of a to the 4th is a squared. Square root of a stays square root of a. Square root of b to the 20th is b to the 10th. b to the 10th here is even, so it will not need absolute values. And then I get c cubed and a c. Putting it all together, 20 a squared b 10 c cubed square root of 5 a c. Notice. Notice here, I've worked it out. If you are somebody who keeps trying to short circuit something, if you are somebody who keeps trying not to write things down, it's going to be problematic. Go ahead and write this out. I now have the cube root of 24x to the 11th, y to the 6th, z to the 19th. I want powers that are divisible by 3. So when I break this up, I get 3 times 2 cubed. Remember that 24 is 3 times 8. 8 is 2 cubed. x to the 11th is x to the 9th x squared, y to the 6th, z to the 18th, and z. Remember this is understood to be a 1 here. Break it down. Write it out. Now, remember, because it's a cube root, e-i-e-i-o doesn't count. So I don't have to worry about absolute values. And then I just take the cube root of 2 cubed, two cu the cube root, the cube root, of x to the m is equal to x to the m divided by 3. And if, if m is not divisible by 3, I either get an x or an x squared underneath the radical. If m is divisible by 3, then it's just x to the m divided by 3. All right, next one up is number 3. And we had 4 cube root of 5 times the cube root of 25. I can remember I can put those together. If it's a square root of negative one, I have to take the i out first. Anything else I can just combine. So now I get four times the cube root of 125 is just four times five or 20. Next up, we have 75. I'm not just sure why all of my little guys are in the wrong places. These guys should be down here over this guy or something. Hmm, I don't know. We'll get to it. Square root of 75x cubed y times 2y cubed z. First off, it's a square root. So again, I'm going to think about my, mm -hmm, maybe, 
I'm going to think about my E I E I O. Kind of splits them like that. So it's an even index check. Even inside. X, no, Y, no. Don't have to worry about absolute values. As soon as I have, even if I add this Y and this Y, the 1 and the 3, and I get Y to the 4th, underneath this radical, mm, Y's got to be positive for this to be a real number. So I then look at getting um, 25 times 3 and the X squared, and that leaves me with the XY over here, 2YZ, Y squared. I take square roots where I can, combine things under radicals. When I combine things under radicals, notice I've got this extra Y squared here, so I've got another Y squared that comes out. Number 5, cube root over cube root. Remember that this can be, I can make this the cube root of 54 divided by 2. 54 divided by 2 is 27. Number 6, okay, negative exponent. That says that I have to take the reciprocal. So now I get the cube root of 1 over 64, where the 64 is squared. Okay, so... This is where I can break this down and I can do the cube root of 1 over 64 squared. This becomes the cube root of 1 over the cube root of 64. And then I can square it because it's easier to take the cube root of 64. 1 over 4 squared, and that's where I get 1 over 16. Okay? Different ways, same end, and both valid. Okay, number seven. You've got 27 minus 5, square root of 27 minus 5 over square root of 3. Okay, first off, remember that 27 isn't a perfect square. And square root of 3, I can't have a root 3, can't have a radical in the denominator. It is a monomial, so I just have to multiply by root 3 over root 3. I have to distribute the square root of 3 to both of these. 3 times 27 is 81, so I get the square root of 81 minus 5 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. That's why we did it. Now, I can take the square root of 81 and get 9. This is then my final answer, or I can do 9 over 3 minus 5 square root of 3 over 3 and reduce it to 3 minus 5 root 3 over 3. You can't just, if you give me 3 minus 5 root 3 all over 3, that's a big no-no. This 3 has to cancel with itself with the 9 and with the 5 in order for it to all stay over 3 or for the 3 oops, for the three to go away. If you were to give me 3 minus 5 root 3, that's also wrong. Okay? You've got to know how to simplify fractions correctly. Okay, number 8. Let's take a quick look at that. Ooh, 2 over 5 plus square root of 3. It's a binomial, therefore I must use the conjugate. Okay? Got to use the conjugate here. What is the conjugate? Well, since this is 5 plus root 3, I'm going to use 5 minus root 3. I have to have the same thing over the same thing so that it is a form of 1. This is the property of 1 or the multiplicity of 1. So now, I'm going to distribute the 2 to the 5 and to the minus root 3. So I get 10 minus 2 root 3. Down here, I can square 25 minus 3. How did I do that? That's that difference of squares. Difference of squares. 5 plus root 3 times 5 minus root 3 is difference of squares. This becomes 22. Now, 22 will go in 2 will go into 22 11 times, 10 5 times and 2 1 time. Can you have a 1 there? Sure. 
but really it's a bit more sophisticated if you don't put the one there. Okay? All right. Next up is number nine. Obviously, still going to need a conjugate here. We have square root of 2 minus 6. Well, do square root of 2 plus 6. As long as you just make one of them negative, it will work. Okay? So, this on the top is going to require you to, for lack of better term, FOIL. So root 5 times root 2 is root 10. Root 5 times 6 is 6 root 5. 1 times root 2 is root 2. 1 times 6 is 6. Now, combine like terms. I can't. 10, 5, 2, they're all in the radical, no square roots. They're all simplified. It can't do anything. Down here, you're going to get 2 minus 36. Square minus square. Negative 34. Nothing else you can do. You can't simplify that one anymore. Number 10. Ooh, a radical and a radical. You can look at this one of two ways. Either rewrite it using, using fractions or rational exponents. Remember that the cube root of 11 is equal to 11 to the one-third. The numerator is the power, and the denominator is the root. And then a square root would be to the one-half. When we raise a power to a power, we multiply the powers, and that's where I get one-sixth. If you realize that, then you can also look at things and say, oh, look, this I know is two, and I will just multiply these guys, and I will get the sixth root of 11. There are problems like this on the test, exactly like this. Number seven, I have seven root six times three root two. Combine the six and the two underneath, the seven and the three on the outside, then simplify the radical. Number 12, I need to rationalize my denominator. Pretty straightforward there. Number 13, okay, number 13, I'm going to break everything up and simplify it. But before I do that, remember that it's an even index. Yep. Ah, odd, odd. All good. Don't have to worry about absolute values. I break apart the 12, the m to the fifth, the n cubed, so that I can simplify it. Now that it's simplified, okay, I now notice all I have in the denominator is a square root of 5. I can also bring an M out and an N out and leave the 6 underneath. Boom. Sometimes it's nice if you simplify as you go. Okay? Number 14. I can't do anything with root 28 and root 54. They're not like radicals, so I can't combine them. But, wait. Can I simplify them both? Yes, I can. So I simplify the square root of 28 to 2 root 7. And I simplify square root of 54 to 3 root 6. That leaves me with negative 4 root 7 and 24 root 6. Mm, still, not like radicals, still can't combine. But they are smaller numbers and it's simplified. Next up is this crazy creature. Remember that you must FOIL. Don't just distribute that square foil. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Root 3 times root 7 is root 21. Root 7 times root 3 is root 21. Root 7 times root 7 is 7. I'm subtracting two root 21s. The 3 and the 7 combine to make the 10. Number 16. I got an negative under the radical, so the I comes out. Then I'm going to break the 242 apart into 2 times 121, because then I can get an 11 out. 11 times 4 is 44, I root 2. Write things as I, A, I, radical B, when it's simplest radical form, okay? Next up, number 17. Okay, here 
I'm going to take the i times the i and get i squared. The 3 times the 4 is 12. Over here, I'm going to take the i out. And then the 50 gets broken apart into 25 and 2. Now I can take the square root of 25 is 5. I also look at i squared and i is i cubed. 12 times the 5 is the 60. Remember, i cubed is equal to negative i. We call i1, i1, and negatives in the middle. This is i, this is i, i squared, i cubed, i to the fourth. So i cubed becomes negative 1. Number 18, root 50 minus root 48. Same dealio. Got different radicals. Can't combine them, but I'm going to simplify them. And if once I simplify them, they're alike, I'll combine them. If not, they're going to stay separate. Square root of 50 becomes 5 root 2. Square root of negative 48. Don't forget to take the i out. That always comes out first. That leaves me with 16 times 3 under the radical. Square root of 16 is 4. I now have 5 root 2 minus 4i root 3. It is a complex number with radicals. But that's all you can do. Okay, number 19. Number 19, before you just hurry up and rationalize. First, take the negative out with the i. Then break the 21 up into square root of 7, square root of 3. Now your square roots of 7 cancel. You have 2i root 3, 2 over i root 3, sorry. You have to get rid of the i and the square root of 3, but there's no conjugate here. There's one term. It's a monomial. So I'm going to multiply by i root 3 over i root 3. Okay, remember that the i, you're going to have 2i root 3 in the numerator. That's just there. Down in the bottom, you're going to have i squared. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. i squared is the negative 1. All right? If you need to, at any point in time, pause the video and look at the work. Or rewind. Move the back and listen again. Number 20. You have square root of negative 24 times the square root of negative 24. Always take the i's out first. You cannot multiply negative numbers underneath the radical. You have to remove the i's. So I broke it apart, and then I took both of the i's out. Then i times i is i squared. 24 times 24 is 24 squared. When I take the square root, it's 24. Remember that the square root of a times the square root of a is going to be equal to a. Whatever's under the radical just comes out. Okay? Great job. That's the end of objective one. That's probably the longest one. And in, in all the ones that we did, none of them needed absolute value. I can tell you on the test, there's at least a couple on each version that require it. But just be careful. The worst case, if the absolute value is the only thing you mess up, you can still have an A on the objective.